Hey everyone, um, welcome. Give me one quick second as I um, inform my friends and I guess family, <laughs> mostly my friends, about this this current live. Um, all right, sorry, I'm going to be real fast. I promise. I'll get better. Uh, come join me live on my. Facebook page. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, my name is Virginia Dwan, and I write a blog um, called Mandarin Mama at mandarinmama.com. I'm also the author of a book called So You Want Your Kid to Learn Chinese. And um, I apologize for the uh, congestion here. I I'm sick for like the millionth time in the last four or five weeks, um, and two of my two of my four children have pneumonia. So awesome! I spend New Year's Eve in the hospital. <laughs> so okay, um, let me see. Let me see. Yes. So today, hey Jane. Uh, today's video is going to be focusing on uh, Chinese comprehension. Um, last week, I spoke briefly about. Um, the um, wanting uh, your kids to be fluent in Chinese and the different levels and to have goals uh, and to set goals at the beginning for what levels you want your children to be at in uh, comprehension, listening comprehension, speaking, writing, and re no, I'm sorry, not writing, reading, and then writing. And the reason why we want to do that is so that, hey, so that you don't waste time. You don't waste your time, your kids' time, your money, I mean, it costs a lot of money, let's be real, uh, or it can. Uh, so uh, yeah, we want, we don't want to waste time, resources, and like goodwill from your children, right? Um, so in a, in a short summary, um, it's uh, if you only want your kid to understand Chinese, you don't really need to send them to Chinese school and learn how to write uh, or learn how to read. Um, you can just, Spend all your time having fun, right? Like watching Chinese movies and uh, listening to Chinese stories and all sorts of stuff. So, or just speaking to your kids. Uh, so, so that's why it's important. So today um, we will be talking about the different types of levels of Chinese comprehension, and there are five. Um, and actually, there'll be five levels in every category. Um, and so, um, this is actually all based on the action plan that Guava Rama. If you don't read her blog, you should, because it is so awesome and so informative. And if I ever sound intelligent, it's because I've read her blog and I'm just regurgitating it uh, with my spin on it. So her blog is guavarama.com. Um, so, uh, so the five different levels of Chinese comprehension. One is you just want some exposure. And by that, we mean like, you know, you can say like ni hao or like be your basic person with like fortune cookie Chinese, right? <laughs> like, oh, ni hao ma, and like, wo ai ni, or, you know, like, oh, I love you. Um, it, I think of it kind of like every gross come on from some gross dude to a, to a Chinese woman or any Asian woman. Oh, am I getting too political? Okay, so, uh, yeah, so some exposure, you, you, and, and like that, all that means is like, you can kind of understand some things. You don't really understand everything, but uh, you can maybe understand some basic commands. You can identify that someone is actually speaking Chinese um, versus some other language. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's, and it's just, just bare minimum exposure. So, and how can you achieve that? You can just speak to your kid in Chinese. That's really easy. Uh, have them listen to Chinese songs or watch Chinese movies. Uh, have things on in the background. Have your... If you have Chinese speaking family members, have them speak occasionally to him or her, uh, to your kids about with Chinese. And um, yeah, listen to nursery songs in the background, um, listen to Chinese popular songs, whatever. Just get them kind of used to Chinese being there, right? Or uh, having an ear for the language. So, um, so for instance, I have some exposure to Spanish, okay? I recognize that it's Spanish when someone's speaking it. Um, I can kind of understand some words, uh, but no one would ever think, oh, gosh, Virginia, your Spanish is amazing. Um, so, yeah, so basic, some exposure, okay? 
And to achieve it, it's really, really easy. And so if that's your goal, you can probably reach that very quickly. Um, and to keep it up, it's very, I mean, that that's great. You will not have a problem doing that. Um, second level is beginner. Okay, so this is a little bit harder. This is a, a little bit more than some exposure. So again, you recognize that the language is Chinese. Um, and to get this level, for someone to actually understand Chinese at a beginning level, uh, you will have to make sure that your child is exposed to the Chinese language at least 80% of their waking hours. Now that sounds like a lot. You're like, Virginia, how, how come just to be a beginner at understanding Chinese, you need 80% of your waking hours in Chinese? Well, um, because you do. <laughs> it's really hard to learn and understand a language if you don't have enough exposure. And um, and uh, you need about 80% of those hours, of those waking hours in Chinese to, uh, to have a decent beginning understanding of what someone's trying to tell you. Otherwise, you just don't have enough time with it, okay? And so what can you do? What, what, can, what can you do as a beginning Chinese understanding? Comprehender, listener? Gosh, I'm sorry, my brain is so fogged. Um, again, you want to speak to your kid about uh, Chinese 80% of the time in their waking hours uh, as much as possible, whether it's through, if you, if you personally cannot speak Chinese, um, then you want to provide it for your children somehow, either through an au pair, a nanny, uh, family members who are constantly there, uh, whether in person or in Skype. Um, and when they have that exposure to add like Chinese stories, uh, you can go to you know, Chinese story time at libraries or Mandarin mommy and me classes. Um, you can listen to Chinese programming on, on the radio or on TV. They're like Meow Me TV is a channel on Amazon Prime. You can use that. Um, you send them to Chinese school. You can listen to Chinese music or watch Chinese shows on YouTube, all sorts of stuff. But you just want exposure as much as many of those waking hours as A, you can stand and B, um, your children can stand and more than your children can stand because likely they will be able to tolerate way less than you. And so that's kind of beginning Chinese. And I would say um, a lot of what we think is uh, more advanced is actually beginning <laughs> Chinese. Um, I was uh, dismayed to find that my levels of Chinese, as I was going through the action plan with um, Guavarama, um, that uh, my Chinese level seemed to decrease the more more we got into the Chinese action plan and I got all sad uh, but it's true um, oh I'm sorry Jane is writing something um, yes Jane says I've heard that Chinese should be spoken to the child and that at the young age Chinese coming from TV or CDs are less effective uh, in fact for all bilingual learning correct that is true um, I think it is from Poe Bri Poe Bronson's book on uh, I forget what it's called I think it's called nurture shock um, and they have found that if your ch if your child or you actually um, do not already understand a language, when you hear CDs and stories and blah 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 uh, in that language, so in this case Chinese, your brain will not process it as a language. Your brain will process it as gibberish, and so it actually doesn't do you any good, really. Maybe except to get the sounds in your brain, um, but it doesn't really help for uh, comprehension until later when you actually um, know Chinese. Uh, because again, your brain processes it as gibberish and not as an actual language. And in fact, if you are going to be uh, exposing your children to like CDs and stories, um, it is better for your children to watch cartoons or shows with live people because then they can see the lips move. And so they will know when a word ends and begins based on like, you know, your mouth. Um, and that's actually a better way to learn language. Again, from the same book uh, than uh, just listening to an audio because otherwise the sounds just run together and you don't know whether a stop is, you know, just a pause or part of the word or, um, yeah. So you want to be able to see their lips moving. Um, and, uh, oh, yes, Jane says, preference should be one parent, au pair, nanny, two, Skype, FaceTime, Hangout, three, cartoons with live people. Yes, I would say that, yes. Um, get as much in-person exposure as possible. Uh, and if you are not a native speaker or, um, and you don't really have too much access to native speaking, then I would highly recommend 
doing those like um, uh, you would approach it as learning a second language. Uh, the immersion kind of helps, but you really need something like um, oh gosh, my brain is totally blanking. But like you, you want something simple like like Nihao Kailan or um, Dora the Explorer, except in Chinese, where they like you know teach you like hello, this is what hello is, ni hao, and like give you basic vocabulary. That's that's a good way for kids who are not native speakers to first start kind of learning, and then um, you can build on that. Um, however, if you are actually a native speaker and your kids are um, Chinese, uh, I guess you don't actually have to be Chinese, um, but, it, but in that case, you should just speak as much as possible to your children. And then if you are not a native speaker and you can afford it, uh, and it's part of your family care plan, then do hire like a native speaking nanny or au pair and they, and your children, when your children are young and that way they can learn their language like um, children in native speaking families learn language. All right, hopefully uh, that helps. All right, the third one is basic functionality. And so before I thought I was advanced and I realized now that I have basic functionality in speaking Chinese, it's kind of like kitchen Chinese. Um, you can kind of understand elementary stories, um, elementary school age stories. You can you can understand most things, um, but like you kind of at a kid level, that's a kitchen Chinese level. Um, you uh, so to help your children with that, they should be able to understand like elementary school audio books. So like they should be able to understand. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Mr. Men and Little Miss um, series in Chinese. Um, they're funny in English too, but my kids love them in Chinese. So they should be able to understand that, okay? Or like basic storybooks, uh, like bedtime stories, um, watching cartoons, uh, elementary age appropriate type of things for them. And uh, like, and and uh, they should be able to function okay in Taiwan or China if you go back for like a few weeks uh, or, a, or a longer period of time. And so, Sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, and then uh, they should be able to understand like adult variety shows. And by adults, I mean like geared for grownups, not actually like adult programming because that's not appropriate. <laughs> so yeah, or like nonfiction news, uh, not newscasts, but like nonfiction stories like, hey, we're gonna learn about the frog and the frog's called Qinghua and like it has two legs and blah, 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 like educational stuff. Um, they should be able to have a basic understanding and so, um, that's what basic functionality is. And again, like to help with that, again, it's, it's building a scaffolding. Um, you, you build upon the previous uh, levels. Sorry, I don't mean to keep moving and making you dizzy. Um, and that your kids should be able to comprehend uh, these cartoons or stories. And um, don't be discouraged if they don't get everything right away. Um, if your children are like mine, they will beg to hear stories that they like over and over and over and, and and over again, like ad nauseum. Like if I never hear a Mr. Men story ever again, that would be too soon. Um, but my children love it. And every time they listen, they, they grasp more vocabulary and they grasp more things because it's become habit. And so then, so then the parts that they didn't understand before, now they understand. So now they realize, oh, I didn't actually quite get the part either. And sadly, my Chinese isn't even that great uh, to understand these stories. So oftentimes, I'm of course safely doing this as I'm driving, um, but I look up vocabulary or I have to kind of like explain um, different things. Uh, so, so yeah, that's, that's another way you, is, you can build on um, your children's Chinese fluency at the basic functionality level. And uh, just repeat hearings. Uh, it will help your kids, it will drive you crazy, but tune it out. I am almost immune to all noise um, because I have four children and I just, I just don't care anymore. <laughs> all right, so the next level, the fourth level is advanced. Um, this is where you should be able to understand like adult aged content of like either modern or historical Chinese dramas. Um, I am not at that level. Uh, I, I totally thought I was at that level um, until one day I was watching a Chinese DVD without English subtitles and I had no idea what the heck they were talking about. Um, so I'm not at that level. Um, but your children eventually could be uh, if you, you know, help them. Uh, I, I think I would be happy if my children reached this level. And that's what I'm personally gunning for for my kids in part so that 
if and when I go back to Taiwan, I do not have to think anymore. Um, my brain does not have to work that hard. And so they should be able to like listen to uh, listen and watch these shows um, or listen to like Xiang Sheng and what Xiang Sheng is like. It's actually a very, very complex, sophisticated type of like comedy, like duo type of shtick. And it, it requires a very, very high knowledge of like um, puns, which means you have to be very educated in terms of like vocabulary, um, knowing like idioms, all sorts of stuff. And they should be, your kids should be able to understand that. This probably won't happen until they're older. Okay. I don't really. Um, or I just have really not that impressive children, <laughs> but uh, probably older kids because uh, they need the vocabulary and experience to kind of get that. Uh, and then some specialized topics like biology or medicine, um, business, uh, science, uh, anything. Right. Uh, so. So, yeah, that's the advanced level. And finally is the native level. Native level. It just I mean, that's native. Right. Like anything in Chinese you should be able to understand. You can watch watch and listen to a TV newscast when they speak at normal speed versus like I can I can catch like five words if I watch a Chinese newscast and so I don't watch it because I can't tell whether something is a whether a proper it's a proper is it a proper noun is it a verb if it is a proper noun is it a person's name uh, if it's a person's name is it like a transliteration of their name uh, or is it you know a country is it is it a city is it a, a company name I have no idea. Um, and, uh, so, so you pretty much have to be a native speaker in order to catch all that and to, or actually to be cognizant of it in your native language, like what English or whatever, um, so that you can actually recognize the transliteration, um, of the, of names. And then of course, all specialized languages. So that's the native level. And you really probably can't achieve that, um, uh, without a lot of study and a lot of time spent in Taiwan or China or any Chinese speaking country um, like Singapore, maybe Singapore. Yeah, Singapore, Malaysia, anywhere they actually speak Chinese a lot. Uh, you you need exposure to that or you, you or highly specialized classes. Um, so those are the main five levels. Um, obviously, it's much easier to get like basic functionality than native level and Again, when I was first starting out on this on this journey, I thought, oh, yeah, native level. Um, but I never really thought about what exactly native level means, and I didn't break it down. And so hopefully breaking this down for you will give you kind of a better sense of what exactly does it mean to be a native level speaker. So my parents, my mother has been in America for about, like, almost 40 years, okay? So, um, so longer than she has ever lived in Taiwan. Um, and so you would think that her English should be native level, but there's still a lot that she doesn't catch. And I didn't realize that, um, but she's probably at advanced level, okay? So she's had 40 years being in America and, um, and she learned English in Taiwan. So she knew how to speak English and she got her MBA in America um, and, you know, had actual jobs and like, I, I, I do not understand how she did it. I, I think she's amazing. Um, because there's no way I could do it in Chinese ever, ever. Um, and still she's not native level, okay? So native level is a tall order. You probably need to be native or, or you have to have a high aptitude for language or you have spent a lot, a lot of time in um, a Chinese speaking country or, or whatever language you're trying to learn. But obviously we're speaking about Chinese. Um, and so, so comprehension is... Uh, just the first level, and uh, hopefully that was informative and not terribly boring. Um, and uh, yeah, so the more the more we delve into this series, um, I'll, next week I'll break down um, speaking. Okay, um, and again, similar similar things. And the reason why we go with comprehension first is that you can't really speak something you don't comprehend. <laughs> and uh, and that your levels of comprehension will probably be, uh, I've heard, I think Guava Rama said it's like a year or two more advanced than your speaking. And that's because it's easier to listen and understand something. It's a different type of um, type of brain activity, I guess, than just than speaking. And that's why so many people can actually are, I, I think it's called passive bilingualism where you can understand but you can't speak it and again different processes of your brain so i hope that helps um if you guys have any questions if you're watching the uh replay 
please leave a comment and I will try and answer it. And I promise my answer will not be buy my book. But you should buy my book. <laughs> uh, it's called So You Think, not So You Think You Dance. I keep calling it that. It's called So You Want Your Kid to Learn Chinese. And you can find it on Amazon. And uh, currently it's only in its digital form. But this year I'm going to make it into a physical book. So then uh, during these videos I will imagine this book here. Okay. So have a great night. Um, I know it's like super late on the East Coast. But um, Thank you so much for joining, and thanks so much for uh, tolerating this congestion. And Happy New Year, and good luck with your Chinese journey with your children. Have a wonderful day. Bye.